previously on Food to Watch Films by. Look, I've done it. It's my puppet themed restaurant that I talked about in episode 3. Seriously? Hey there, Master Johnny. This is a pleasant surprise. Will you be dining with us tonight? Hmm? Uh, yes, I will, Finkel. Good to see you, as always. Johnny, these are actually Muppets. Okay, um, so that's uh, one hamburger and one chili dog coming uh, up. N- no, 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 sorry. Is that yeah. wrong? You've got uh, kind of chicken balls? I- I'm, sh- I'm sure he's got a very plush uh, touch, but uh, uh, yeah, I'm just trying to provide a good service. I'm just saying, fuzz is a pervert. Here you go, guys. Flaming hot. Baked Alaska. Ooh. Oh, that's nice and hot, isn't it? The flame's getting kind of high. We better get out of here. Ah! Oh, good God. Oh, my God. Oh, no. My face. My beautiful face. Oh, shit. Let's get out of here. <laughs> God, I want to be done. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. how it goes. Anyway, how do? Pablo here. Uh, for this, the inaugural episode of Foods to Not Watch Films By. Um, now, you may recognise my dulcet tones from the podcast Food to Watch Films By, and uh, you'll be probably a bit confused, tuning in for the new episode and thinking, how, how is that, uh, how is that not Johnny or Adam speaking? Uh, how can Pablo speaking so really? He's normally tucked right, right at the back, almost forgotten about. Like an afterthought. Well, uh, there's a change to that. Um, as you may have uh, realised from previous episodes, I often try and track down Johnny and Adam, um, hoping they could be my, my real friends. Um, but I digress. Uh, but thankfully, with the help of a local locksmith and um, a couple of home devices that were sewn into uh, some gifts I sent the boys a little while ago, I've been able to track their location down to this street in Leeds. Now, uh, the only problem is I've got all my bits and pieces in my tools, but this does look like quite the heavy door. I don't know if I'll be able to uh, go on these big steps. Right, let's see. Oh, unlocked. Well, let's see what's inside here. Oh, you could cut the stank with a knife. What do these boys do in here? What's this? Craft ale bottles everywhere. Oh, I'm gonna have to... right, well, hopefully I can be in and out, record this new episode, without the boys even knowing I was here. Right, where is everything? Oh, God. I mean, I know this is an audio medium, but there's a pile of half-eaten rancid hot dogs just lying on the floor oh you know i've seen some sights in my time but uh, that's that's enough to turn even my stomach um right well here's the uh, the old podcast booth uh, so we'll sit down now uh oh it's gonna be gorgolo today chaps and ladies of course can't uh, discriminate um so first up hang on Right, um, I think that's them coming back. Mm-hmm. Right, I yep, just yeah. have to get in this Literally, cupboard. Literally, it is everywhere. Oh, well, I'm not sure, it was, it was like a Jackson Pollock paint. It was, oh, oh. It's disgusting. <laughs> it's telling me, it's telling mm, me. Yeah. Couldn't right. see for a week. Oh. Oh. All right, um, whoa, hang on, the equipment's on. That's a bit weird. Do you leave it, you didn't leave it on from... I must, have left, episode, on. I must have left it on from last episode. That's pretty weird. <laughs> All right. Well, um, wasting anyway. electricity, mate. Wasting electricity. Yeah, let's get started then. Well, um, hello and yeah. welcome to Food to Watch Films by episode Hi ten. Mm, oh, ten. zombie themed episode. Feels like it should be an anniversary episode ten. Yeah. But, um, it's falling on uh, in October, so uh, we're going for a little bit of a Halloween. Yes. Yes. A mm. bit of a horror vibe. Mm. Um, Looking at uh, looking at zombies, mm, so, zombie, yeah. yeah, the undead. Yeah. So if if you've not listened to this podcast before, my name is Johnny. 
And my name's Adam. And we're going to be talking to you about the uh, symbiotic relationship between food and films. Mm -hmm. Uh, Basically, what I mean by that is we talk about films we've watched and recommend food that we think would help to heighten and enhance your experience of watching that film. Mm, Indeed. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, I I know I've got a bit of an upbeat um, vibe going on, but uh, I'm actually feeling pretty, pretty bad. Adam. What was that? Well, if anyone listened to the last episode, it, it all ended quite tragically uh, with my pu- ah, yeah. puppet theme restaurant being. Yeah, you know, I'm 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 not going to sit here and say I told you so because you know I know you you, you put a lot of effort into that a lot of time. Um, my, um, so I'm sorry, man. But yeah, uh, tragically, um, thirty odd puppets died in that yeah. fire. They were all friends of mine, particularly um, Finkel. Uh, my yeah front of house and a, a friendly uh, some would say um, overly friendly no shit have I got the wrong one think was the that, that, that was Fuzzer shit. that was Fuzzer sorry sorry yeah Fuzzer was the one who uh, yeah but yeah. Um, anyway yeah, um, so you know um, I'll see you at the crossroads I'll see you there but <laughs> did you just quote Blazer Squad yeah I did um, <laughs> again but anyway, um, you know, to kind of, I suppose, deal with my grief a little bit. You know, yeah. uh, recently you were talking about you had a, a goats and trees calendar. Yeah, I'm, I'm not the the best with um, diarising things, as, uh, as, as but... Johnny, you've you've found out in the past over years. Um, so yeah, I've I've, uh, I've got a, a goats and trees calendar, uh, which helps me, uh, you know, get my shit together. Really, it, it has helped. Well, I've, I'm not forgetting appointments and things. Well, yeah, I mean, in, in my time of darkness, I was trying to call upon an image that would, you know, help me through that and uh, uh, suddenly that, that just came in my head a goat in a tree it is hilarious and they're like this <laughs> literally funny man no there's like um, 12 different goats on, on 12 different trees I, I mean there's actually goats in trees yeah like, this, what are they doing I don't know what, how they get up there but doing? it's a thing goats love to this be on trees to be trees <laughs> yeah and, and you know that's helping me through the day um, so basically, I've, pur- I've purchased a whole stack of goats and trees calendars, and okay. um, I might, I'm, I'm, you know, I might, I might put some memorials to Finkel, Fuzzer, all the other um, Muppets in the uh, name the goats. <laughs> right? Are you sure you're okay? Because it sounds like you're working through I, quite a lot of shit here. I, I'm feel oh yeah. Oh, anyway, uh, okay. maybe we should just move on. Yeah, let's. Uh, um, it, it might help you if we if we go into the next segment. Yeah, uh, get get through the top five. That usually oh, cheers you up. Oh yes, please. Yeah, go for let's it. Let's do it. Let's. Yeah, uh, here's uh, my top five. Cause this is Adam's. Adam's top ten. I mean five. So yeah, as we've mentioned, um, this Halloween um, mm. episode uh, is going Ooh. to be all about the undead, and yeah. uh, it's going to be focused Brain. on brains, about on, on zombies. Mm. Um, and you know, there's a, there's a rich pool of zombie movies out yeah, there. There is. There's, there's a there's a, you know a lot of shit. <laughs> Let's be honest. There's uh, but there's also a lot of fantastic films as well. But I kind of thought it would be a bit too obvious. Um, we don't want to be predictable. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought it'd be too obvious to come out with a top five. I think, in, you know, everyone's top five would have certain similar films, such as, you know, Night of the Living Dead's pretty much a gold standard. Wow. Yeah. Um, Dawn of the Dead would be in there, Eternal Living yeah. Dead. The, those are the kind of ones that you'd expect. So we're, we're, we're not going through a top five films. Now, I think, yeah, Just Rihanna, yeah, there's an award. Anyway. Um, but what I really wanted to show this top five is because zombie films have really evolved mm-hmm. over, over the last few years. Um, we? Well, the last, last few decades has definitely been evolution. And as the film genre itself has evolved, it's kind of spawned subgenres, such as, you know, you've got zombie uh, horror action comedy mm. even zombie love stories yep, and as that's have. evolved we've seen the the characters of zombies yeah. have evolved they've moved away from just being that the the, the brainless mindless um ghoul you know mm. um so my top five this episode is going to focus on memorable zombies in movies Ooh, that sounds good yeah i'm up for that excellent all right so, so uh, honorable mentions first or? yeah honorable mentions um all right slightly Controversial uh-huh. honorable mention here because I, I needed to say Bill Murray in Zombieland, oh, yeah, yeah, zombie Bill Murray. Now, technically, he's okay, not actually a zombie, yeah, he's not actually he's yeah. posing as a zombie, he's trying to pretend to be a zombie. Um, he, he never at any stage becomes a zombie. Um, but yeah, I, I wanted to throw that in there because it's one of the best cameos of all time. Um, then 
honourable mention again, Doctor Hill uh, from you said it earlier, Reanimator. Yes. Um, you know a really fine. Yeah, but you know conscious, cold, and calculated uh, zombie villain, and mm. you know a lot of the uh, the plots that he comes up with is doing it while completely headless and operating <laughs> yeah. his body. So it's yeah, um, Doctor Hill certainly deserves uh, an honourable mention at the very least. Yeah. So, okay. Number five. Number five. I've gone for Ed in uh, Shaun of the Dead. Oh, yeah, of course. Now, yeah. spends yeah. his time throughout the movie mainly being alive, but right at the end, unfortunately, yep, Nick Frost's character does get bitten and ultimately does turn into the undead. Mm-hmm. Um, but Playing PlayStation. And spo- yeah, spoiler alert, he is kept in the shed. Um, you know, even even zombie virus can affect uh, Sean and Ed's uh, friendship and his uh, playing PlayStation. I kind of like to think that if I ever got bit by a zombie, that you'd do that to me, you'd sort of yeah. keep me in the shed, yeah. do the podcast every now and again still. Yeah, yeah I would actually. Yeah, I would. would. Do that for me? Yeah, yeah, of course I would. Thanks, man. Anything. But just goes to show, friendship cannot die. <laughs> oh, no, I like that. Yeah. Friendship cannot die, yeah, yeah. even yeah. when dead. There's a sound bite for you. Yeah. Okay, so uh, number four. Number four. So we started off with a zombie comedy. Mm-hmm. We're now going on to a zombie love story. Mm-hmm. And I've gone for R out of Warm Bodies. Oh, I've not, seen character. It. I have not seen it. Well, you know, the reason I thought you needed to have a, m- a mention on this, because ultimately um, it's one of the rare... Um, at zombie movies where the zombie is actually the protagonist okay, yeah. throughout the film uh, and ultimately again spoiler alert we find that um, you know it's, it really does show humanity he's still got memories he's still consciousness and ultimately that starts coming back mm-hmm. and it, it, eventually we find out that the power of love can, can cure turn it yeah back. can cure you into Ooh. human the power of love wow yeah so number four is R from Warm Bodies so from friendship to love, it's yeah. quite romantic. It is, it anyway. is romantic. Yeah, but zombie love film. This is what I'm saying. This is the the rich tapestry we now have in zombie films. Yeah, yeah. Okay, number three. Number three. I've gone for Bub from Day of the Dead. Day of the yeah yeah yeah. So Quality. and again, well, again, it's got, it's going on to this kind of humanity. Um, mm. You know, right? Rather than zombies just being these kind of brainless, well, brainless but mindless monsters, um, what we see in Day of the Dead and with Bub is that as they're you know kind of experimenting on him, they find that you know he has memories. Yeah, he, yeah. he's able to show emotion. Yeah, um, it's about educating him, isn't it? Yeah, like and sort of rehabilitating in a way. I think that that was one of the earliest stages that you kind of really get to. To, to see that particularly around that time a lot of the mm. zombie films have been stereotyped in terms of being just hordes of zombies mm. um, and not really having the character and you know it, it is you, you do start to feel a, a, you know a real bit of connection with Bub yeah, so I thought yeah. certainly with his headphones and yeah his, uh, shaving his pistol yeah his pistol <laughs> um, you know you, you do want Bub to come back yeah. really yeah. and you can see those glimpses of humanity I thought it was really powerful yep. not, not my favourite Zombie film, I will say, Day of the Dead. No, I think it's the strongest. I like it. I like it uh, it's all. It's all right. It's got its moments, but I think certainly that yeah. um, that is is one of the best uh, best elements of the film. Mm-hmm. Number two. Number two. Sorry, that's supposed to be a zombie. Uh, that was terrible. Anyway. Yeah, it was, it, I thought it was pretty good, mate. Thanks. Um, number two. I've gone for Karen Cooper. Mm-hmm. And you may say the casual zombie watcher may say, "Who is this Karen Cooper?" Well. Night of the Living Dead. She's mm. the uh, the little girl. Oh yes. Who um, again? Spoiler alert. Um, is turned into a zombie and ultimately kills her own mother. Yeah. Um, that I recently rewatched uh, Night of the Living Dead, um, and I remember watching it originally, and that scene stuck with me. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's horrible, terrifying. It? Yeah, yeah. It's, your, your own child turning on you. Yeah, yeah. But Nightmare. The, I think as well in the build-up to that, you kind of see her turning and you, you, her suffering. Mm. Um, so, it's, you know, it's really built up and then ultimately she flips, mm. turns into a zombie and kills her own mother. Yep. It, there's something inherently creepy about kids in horror movies anyway. Yeah. Um, but this, yeah, this takes it to the next level. It does. Um, even after all these years, it still <laughs> really affects me. So, yeah, yeah. Um, number two, Karen Cooper, Night yep. of the Living Dead. So... Number one. Yeah, takes us to number one. And for number one, mm-hmm. I've gone for Tarman. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, yeah, yeah. He, this is how he's, he's credited in the movie. Um, Tarman out of Return of the Living Dead. Mm-hmm. Um, now, the reason I've put Tarman in here, and Tarman, uh, again, is, is one of the, the, the zombies, and he's actually 
Brains. Brains. Well, that's that's a good point because there's three reasons I put Tarman in at number one. Mm-hmm. And Return of the Living Dead is often overlooked as being one of the, the better zombie movies, but it introduced us to three key aspects through mm-hmm. the character of Tarman that would nev- never really appeared in zombie films before and then became a standard kind of convention thereafter. Mm-hmm. Um, so, number one, we had zombies that could communicate, yeah. zombies that could understand and talk and actually communicate and had consciousness. Yeah. Uh, that hadn't really been done uh, mm. before then, or had been done to some extent. Yeah. Um, Send more guards. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Send more paramedics. <laughs> but um, So that's one reason. Number two, mm-hmm. we had the fast-moving zombie. Mm, yeah, yeah. So yeah. traditionally, again, up to that point, you just had these... You could run away from them. They yeah. were slow, clumsy. Yeah, and I now think... you're fucked. Again, I think it was becoming a little bit too predictable. And, and yeah, I mean, people needed to see something else. And now, with the fast-moving zombie, mm. you know, you look at World War Z, that uses it to the nth degree. Mm. But it's become a bit of a standard now. But yeah, yeah, 28 days t- later 28 well. days yeah. later, yeah, yeah. yeah. One of the terrifying things is the speed at what the zombies yeah, move yeah. to. Um, so, yeah, the, we have the fast-moving zombie introduced through yeah. Tarman. And number one, um, and probably more importantly... You said it earlier, Johnny. Brains. Yeah. Up to that stage, zombies didn't really eat brains. Um, the you know if you're doing an impression of a zombie, that's probably the first thing you're going to do. Go mm. brains. That was introduced through the return of the living dead. Yeah, the right. need and the hunger. Yeah, for, for the brain. brains and not just the bowels or yeah. the bum cheeks. Exactly. The brains straight into the brain. And uh, Tar Man, we do see in a very gory scene. Uh, digging into a brain and then he wants more brains yeah. and then uh, yeah so uh, that was introduced through that film and through Tra- Tarman for that reason has to be my number one memorable Ooh. zombie Ooh, that's quite quite a nice rundown and yeah, some good well. good mentions there I think I, I'm, I'm just going to drop in a quick honourable mention for, yeah absolutely um, I, I've always been a fan of uh, Peter Jackson's Brain Dead um, also Perfect. known as Dead Alive and in that is some amazing zombies you got the nurse zombie who's mm. uh, freaky as and then the, it's, the it's priest mother. as well who becomes a zombie too and they have a, a strange relationship yeah his mother as well um mm. yeah and as well as actually 28 days later as well there's that priest right at the start uh, zombie that yeah. is terrifying he, really, he really very terrifying. nearly murdered into the honorable yeah. mentions <laughs> just his, his, his movements yeah, kind yeah. of erratic movement. and he's a priest god damn it but then he gets <laughs> taken out by a shopping bag yeah, yeah. Um, but, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah and it you know, as always, if you do have any um, mentions of your own, if you've got an alternative top five, you know, hit us up on uh, Twitter or yep. um, any other form of social media. Yeah, FTWFB podcast. That's the one. Facebook or anything. And uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, share. Let us know. Brilliant. Okay. Well, um, yeah, thanks for that. And uh, let's move on. Cupboard cast. I'm currently in Johnny and Adam's cupboard. Um, they're in the adjoining room. Um, neither of them are wearing trousers. I don't know if that's a common occurrence for the record, but um, yeah, it's strange. All the all the same. Um, now, luckily, I've been able to sit down on a pile of goats in trees calendars. Enough. Make of that what you will. Um, but look, I can see through a crack in the door. That smell has not got any better. Um, oh, I think a bit of commotion. Adam's looks like Adam's moving. It's wheeling in a gurney of some sort from outside. Oh, that smell! It looks like a deep fried jumper with a with a head. Is that is that Finkel? Honestly mate, I'm I'm not comfortable with this. Uh, but it there's a chance he might live again. You you you're messing with shit that you don't understand. 
Oh, what do you know? The, this is dark arts. You, you have no control over this. You don't know what you're doing. You well, can, can honestly stir up some, some serious well, dark shit. Just let me try, okay? Just let me try. Okay. Anyway, should, should we move on to our first film and food recommendation anyway? <laughs> yes, if it, yeah, let's do that. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, uh, we're going to look at, first of all, um, the 1932 film White Zombie. Mm-hmm. Which, uh, basically, uh, should we say the, the very beginning, in a way, of uh, the zombie genre yeah i mean it's it's certainly uh you know we're kicking things off here with what is probably the first out and out zombie movie mm-hmm. um zombies did appear in early cinema before that but they weren't really labeled as zombies as such um and the this is the first time we actually gave them the identity yeah of, of an of an entity as, as a zombie yeah um so yeah we're starting from the beginning yeah and they're very much the kind of the the well i suppose the traditional zombie sense that sort of um originating from haiti the sort of voodoo zombie yeah the, the kind of religious where... aspects of it and the uh yeah raising the dead from the grave but through the means of yeah of voodoo johnny yeah. voodoo something Vood- that i wouldn't recommend anybody oh. um dabbles in unless you uh you've never tried uh, it well practice yeah. Anyway, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Um, but yes, yeah, so, and it's very much to raise people from the dead, and so they become your servants. And mm. in this film, it's uh, Bella Lugosi, who's the zombie master, murder legendre, absolute legend, character. Bella Lugosi. Yeah, and um, yeah, it kind of starts, isn't it? There's um, uh, Madeline, uh, played by Madge Bellamy, and uh, Neil Parker, her, her well, husband to be. Isn't it? Uh, played by yeah, Jean yeah, Harris. fiance at the time, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're in Haiti and they've been offered by Charles Bowman, played by Robert Fraser, the, the some sort of opportunity for marriage, isn't it? That he's going to support them to get married in. Yeah, I was always a little bit confused as to his it, role. He basically invites them over to Haiti. Mm-hmm. Um, they had to have the the wedding there, and he's going to kind of facilitate and support that. Yeah. Um, for some reason, I think he, there's a promise of maybe um, a, is a promise of a job or something along those lines uh, for I'm John sure. Harron's character um, at the end of it. Um, but yeah, he, he has an ulterior yeah. motive. Yeah. He. He, he basically desires Madeline, and he's actually made a bit of a, a pact with Bella Lugosi's character, who's uh, yeah got got a bit of a clan of zombies going on, and he's basically worked out that perhaps uh, he could get Madeline back from the dead and become his servant of of love. Yeah, well, first kill her and then bring her back from yeah, the dead yeah. to raise her as a as a as a zombie that he can control. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, and, and at first, uh, uh, Charles Bowman, again played by Robert Fraser, is, is a little bit disgusted and, and repulsed by this suggestion. But uh, soon his desires overwhelm him, mm. shall we say, and uh, uh, cloud his senses. And uh, he does actually act upon yeah. um, Bella Lugosi's uh, suggestion of a zombifying Madeline. Yep, yeah. a sexual zombie. And it all goes tits up. Yeah. I, I got a. I, do you get a bit of a feel? And, and and this isn't. I'm pretty sure this isn't just because of the association of Bela Lugosi and the period in which it was filmed in. But I got a real sort of Dracula feel to it. Oh, in yeah. terms of storyline. Well, he, he did play. Dracula well, yeah, yeah, and that's there. what I'm saying. It's not 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 just because of that association of of him as a, as Dracula, yeah, but think, uh, yeah. Dr. Bruner more of the kind of Van Helsing yeah. character, yeah, yeah, and yeah. it is you know the kind of because Bela Lugosi's character also we find out it 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 betrays. Charles Bowman, mm-hmm. um, and and tries to zombify him because he desires Madeline, oh, wants yeah. Madeline uh, for himself, and it's almost like trying to rescue her from the clutches of a monster um, element that's kind with, of really uh, ring true. Sort of, eyebrows, yeah, with very fantastically groomed eyebrows. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but yeah, yeah there's more, a similar more beats than Noel Gallagher. Or... Exactly, exactly. The, the best monobrow that cinema has ever ever captured. Mm. Um, but yeah, there was a lot of similar beats I found to kind of the, the, the traditional uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, the, yeah. Dracula, the Bram Stoker's. Yeah, I mean, it is very much in a way, almost like a retelling of Dracula, but this time with zombies. Yeah. Uh, and Bela Lugosi, you know, it's, it's kind of like they've just lifted him straight out of um, his role as uh, Dracul and uh, yeah, now he's, he's, made him a zombie master instead. I think Bela Lugosi. I mean, it has to be said. Um, 
I don't know what your thoughts are on this, Johnny, but uh, it, the, the, a lot of the movie hung on Bella's performance. His eyes. His, his, his <laughs> eyes, his hands, hand gestures, his, yeah. but the delivery of his lines. Um, but he, ha- he has... The, the wonderful thing about his performance as, as a horror villain mm. is he's got that kind of natural charm as mm. well as creepiness. Yeah. Um, you know, he's, he's, he, any scene he was in, he kind of stole. Yeah, he was um, owning it. He was, oh, yeah, he was owning it. He really was. Yeah. Um, and he, he's an actor who, will, yeah, you know, he's, he's been. Uh, he was typecasted um, mm. to some extent. But when you, it's you, the eyebrows. It's the eyebrows that <laughs> did it. It's, it's all about the eyebrows. Um, but yeah, I thought it was fantastic yeah. um, in the role. And uh, yeah, visually as well, I thought it was really impressive. You know, um, his sort of castle fortress um, on the uh, the cliff tops. Yeah, it was really impressive. Some of the yeah. cinematography, the way it looked, um, mm. obviously what they were able to do back then as well. Exactly. Yeah. It was, you know, the, one of the scenes that actually struck me, aside from the, the fantastic settings, which, you know, I, I love that period of, mm. of cinema for that. Um, one of the, 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 in terms of cinematography, one of the most striking scenes, I think, was the, uh, the scene in the bar. When John Harron, played by Neil Parker, oh, yeah, is, is yeah. mourning the loss of his fiance, yeah. and there's just the the same way he's drinking, and there's these silhouettes lit in, in the bar of the, you know, kind of other people around. It's just because it's really kind of ghostly, uh, kind of setting, but, but but really sort of just encapsulates his, his isolation. Mm. Um, you know, very sort of simple uh, shot, if you like, but very powerful as well. And I thought that was just really really clever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and. Uh, yeah, and uh, to, oh, I suppose we haven't talked too much about the zombies yet, but yeah, um, yeah well, the, the zombies yeah. in this as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, von Gelder. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I mean the zombies are just um, yeah, k- kind of. I suppose quite humorous in a way to watch now. Probably back then they were probably a bit more terrifying. <laughs> but what's I suppose quite refreshing in a way is to watch a zombie film where the zombies aren't just you know ripping gore you know ripping off limbs and chomping into things they're they're you know mindless well not mind well mind controlled zombies basically mm. um you know driving uh was it horse and wagon and stuff and operating machinery and stuff for uh yeah exactly i thought it was an in- a really interesting concept um of having these these kind of hordes of zombies um you know, being slaves, being used as slaves, because this is how the tradition started. You know, the, yeah, yeah. not the kind of fleshy in aspects of it that came no. later with you know, lights of night, the living dead. Um, but yeah, just having you know, using them as slaves. I'd love to see a modern day zombie movie that went pulled it back a bit, not necessarily yeah, yeah, remake white zombie, yeah. but yeah, mm, you know, like kind of using that. that concept of 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 using zombies as, as slaves. And yeah, although I suppose people are just you know, they they, they do want that bit of gore, don't they? They want the you know. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, but no, I mean, this is—I mean, yeah, it's great. And, and that scene towards the end where the zombies sort of um, corner John Harren, Harren's character, and it does feel a bit more like a kind of typical zombie film in a way, like ooh. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, yeah, there's no uh, bowels being ripped open or anything like that. But yeah. um, it's quite tense, exactly. And at the end of the day, look, it's a product of its time. Mm. But I, I I still found it entertaining. And at the end of the yeah. day, you look, watch it. It's, it's it's on YouTube. It's um, an hour. Yeah. It's about just over an hour. It doesn't take a lot of time. Yeah. Uh, if you've got an interest um, in in cinema in general, but also zombie films, yeah. it's certainly worth a, a watch. I'd say. Yeah, yeah. T- taking it right to the back to the start, back to the bones of it. Yeah, it's like zombies oh, yeah, bones. Yeah. yeah, I'm with you. <laughs> hey, right down to the bone. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, <laughs> should, should we get on to the food recommendations? Uh, then? Yes, let us move uh, move on. Okay, well, um, yeah, with this one, um, the scene that, that, that stuck out for me was when Charles Beaumont's character is um, he's, he's, he's in Bela Lugosi's castle um, and he's, uh, I think Bela Lugosi has served him some wine and he's starting to be gradually poisoned and, and uh, mm-hmm. you know, with the intention that eventually he'll, he'll become a zombie too. And uh, he's going through this phase of uh, being re- almost really woozy and a- unable to communicate, and he knows what's happening to him, but he can't do anything about it. Uh, yeah, yeah. And he says that you know, I, I, it, it, it wishes that he could talk to him now because he's the first person to know what's actually happening to yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in fact, yeah, that was kind of that was pretty uh, gory in itself, even though not out of uh, overtly gory. But yeah, yeah go on, yeah. carry on. Anyway. And uh, and also at the end as well, Madeline's character when she's um, you know. The zombie, the, the sort of the zombie control that's been put on her sort of lifts, and there's this darkness that lifts off her, but pr- 
prior to that, again, she's been unable to communicate and what have you, and is in a bit of a trance-like state. Well, that got me thinking about the times where, you know, when you go out for like a massive curry, like a really big, mm. you know, you really gorge on it. You know, I'm yeah. talking like six different curries, you know, naan bread, mm. um, everything, all the works, oh, yeah. some side dishes. I'll you have a couple of beers. This is, this is getting me hungry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and you have a couple of beers as well. Yeah. And, and, and you finish up and you all go, oh, should we go for a drink? And you just can't. Like you can't mm. talk, you can't communicate because you're just too full. You're Food like, cough. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Food zombification. Exactly. Food mm. zombification. So, you know, that's that's what I'd recommend for this to kind of get into that vibe of what, you know, Madeline would have been experiencing and yeah. Charles Bowman as well when he sat at the table and he's like, ooh, ooh, ooh yeah. unable to say out. That is what I'm like after most Christmas dinners mm. as well. Yeah, yeah. I'd say, yeah, as, as well as curries. Uh, but yeah, I like that. So yeah. that's a good way of thinking. Yep. Um,. So, um, yeah, if, if you're done. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, uh, I, I am done. Yeah, for, so for my suggestion, um, I wanted to encapsulate mm-hmm. the um, uh, the sort of Haitian traditions of, oh, right, okay. you know, kind of the zombie element and, and the scene in, in which the movie is set. Ooh, exciting. So I've, I've actually gone for a, a traditional Haitian um, meal. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I'd, I had a quick search through uh, sort of different Haitian dishes, and it's quite interesting actually because um, with the history of of the area, you know mm-hmm. they've got influences from Spain, from oh, France, right. Africa, Caribbean. You know, the, loads of different um, uh, you know uh, food traditions kind of thrown in there. But what I've gone for is a traditional Haitian meal, which is lambe or a conch, um, okay. which is essentially. Mm. Um, a, Tell me uh, what it is. Well, it's, it's, it's uh, shellfish in a way, but it's actually uh, uh, basically giant sea snails. Okay. Uh, the the oh, sea yeah. snails are plentiful um, on the uh, off the coast of the island. Um, so it's, right. it's a bit of a staple diet, a uh, source, of, source of protein, uh, but not something that's uh, widely available um, over here. Oh, so okay. uh, I thought I'd give that a try. Um, and the traditional way, there's loads of different ways that it can be eaten. It can be eaten pizza, you know, various different ways. Um, but um, I thought just a, a lambie in a, in a stew, which is a really traditional sort of Haitian stew. So kind of spi- very spices in there, um, mm-hmm. mixed peppers, all stewed up nicely. A Haitian meal and, and you know, some, some rice on there probably as well because you need something to accompany it. Um, so, yeah, I just wanted to uh, sort of... Get, shout get, out get to Haitian. the Haitian. Yeah, shout out to the Haitians over there who are listening yeah, to it. Yeah. We've got a big Haiti following. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I wanted to, to represent. Hi, hey. Hi, Haiti. Yeah. Thanks for listening. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, it's a pretty simple, straightforward one. But, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Oh, well, there you go. So, uh, White Zombie, check it out. And uh, if you want a little something to have with it, either have a, a ridiculously huge curry banquet and some beers to really put yourself in a, a vegged out state. Um, or why not check out a bit of Haitian food and get yourself a a, a l- lambi, a lambi, a yeah. lambi, L A M B I, yeah, yeah, and uh, tuck in, yeah. All right, well, uh, shall we move on? How do Pablo here? Still talking from inside the food to watch films by cupboard, um, in Johnny and Adams house and um, now I can confirm that what I thought was some sort of deep fried jumper with her head is actually Finkel last seen presumed lost in the great Muppet restaurant fire of last episode um, still smouldering um, that smell is disgusting and you know I've, I've dealt with burning flesh um, of all species um, but Muppet that is a, a definite different type of stank. Um, now that they've put on what seemed to be rudimentary lab gear. Yeah. Oh, Adam's falling over. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh. Um, yeah. Johnny's, Johnny's helping him up. Now he's going into a bag and pulling out a big syringe that, oh, that is bright that is very bright it's like a neon uh, more than neon prion even green um, coming from that syringe that does not look natural that's some sort of chemical or radioactive compound I'm no expert I'm no expert but that does not look natural 
nosing Jackson it into Finkel, right through the uh, the uh, well, what used to be the the nose, I would believe. Oh God, it's starting to. Sh oh God, that's unnatural. I don't. Oh no, no, nothing, nothing. Right, well, that looks like yeah, both raised the the hands up by the side uh, with a shrug. Um, yeah. Oh, headphones going back on. Uh, looks like we're back on. I'll, I'll check uh, check back with you in a moment. Okay, so uh, at that part of the podcast again, where we've invited a listener to join us and uh, you know uh, share some knowledge and play some games. And uh, this one is, uh, weirdly, his name's Johnny. So this is going to be rather confusing, but mm. Johnny, are you there? I am indeed, yes. Hey. All right, Johnny, how's, Hi, Johnny. how's it going? Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. Yeah, well, um, yeah, we've invited you to join our um, zombie fest. Mm. Um, are, are you a fan of the genre? Uh, I am indeed, yes. Mm. Greatly. Yeah. Good, good. Well, I um, yeah, we we've given you. Well, we asked you to consider a question in preparation, um, and basically, uh, the question was: if you were a zombie, which part of the human anatomy would you go for first, or try to eat first? I I'd probably go for the knee. The knee. Whoa, Oof. that that took me by surprise. Why? Why the <laughs> knee, Johnny? Uh, basically, I'm quite a tricky bloke, so. I figured if I take out the knee, I'll probably be able to eat more people before <laughs> they come back and eat other people. Right, fair dues, okay, fair dues. Okay, calculated. <laughs> so, so what, do you mean like the kneecap, like rip the kneecap off? or Just not to stop her from moving. Because yeah. so. <laughs> you yeah. don't want your food running away from you, basically, is what you're saying. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good idea. I was going to say, because there's not a lot of meat on the uh, on the old kneecap. But yeah, um, but yeah, but but yeah it logical. is the first bit and then delves straight into yeah. The, the, yeah, the rump. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Straight into the room. <laughs> Straight into the room. Yeah, and you know it's uh, yeah because the, the multitude of zombies. And I always find when you watch zombie films, you get the ones that go for the face, you know, and go for the neck, uh, or, go, yeah. or delve straight into the bowels and go for that colon. Um, so you know, it's uh, it is interesting. To think, you know, if I was one of the undead, what would I go for? Oh, I always I thought know. it was strange in Return of the Living Dead when uh, Tarman um, goes straight for the head. Oh like yeah, straight yeah, yeah. away, he just bites right into it like yeah, an apple. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, they're doing all the uh, Living Dead films. Yeah. They're like, it's like uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, uh, so yeah, we've prepared. Well, I've prepared a little game for us to play um, on the the theme of zombies. Um, but uh, well, I'll tell you what. I'll play the theme tune first. So here we go. Well, I'm going down to that supermarket And I'm going to smash some zombies in the face <laughs> yes. Dylan Yeah, yeah, Bob, Bob um, Yeah, I was in touch with Bob the other day And he was like, oh, you know, I've been really wanting to uh, contribute to the podcast, so I was like, "Oh well, you know what?" He um, loves a zombie film, mm. is Bob. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he yeah. Does. yeah. Fan. yeah, yeah. I'd love to see Bob Bob Dylan as zombie. Actually, I reckon. Yeah, Dylan zombie. Shit. Yeah, I think that'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Depends which era, Dylan. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He'd sound good as well. <laughs> <laughs> he does. He does sound like a zombie now. Yeah, Bob does. Dylan. He's sounding more and more like. It. I have a theory that he's actually a zombie. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So um, yeah, just to give you the backstory of the game. It's time to do the weekly big shop, so you head down to the local Asda supermarket. As you arrive at the supermarket, you get a sense that something around the world around you has changed, but you're not sure what. Could have something to do with the crashed cars, the distant screams, and the pieces of human remains littered around the car park. Now, obviously, if you live in somewhere like Morley or Driglinton, that's quite, you know, everyday. Probably. Once you stroll through the main doors of the supermarket, you're greeted by a slightly edgy-looking Dale Winton and his camera crew. It turns out that the zombie apocalypse broke out just as they were filming an episode of Supermarket Sweep. The contestants who were meant to appear have been completely consumed by the hordes of zombies now wandering supermarket aisles, and as they say, <laughs> the show must go on. So he asks if you'll take part in his Supermarket Sweep by entering the Isles of the Dead in his new game, Supermarket, supermarket Creep. Creep. 
<laughs> you get it. Um, yeah. Oh, hello. So, yeah, as per the rules of Supermarket Sweep, you've both been given a shopping list of food items, all okay. of which have featured in previous episodes of this podcast, I might add. Um, so you must collect um, these items from the supermarket shelves as quickly as possible. The only difference this time is that you have an army of flesh biters to contend with, and as they try to pin you down and tear you open like a thin, this crispy pancake. Each item is worth a different number of points. However, the higher points associated with an item, the more risk of being chomped by a Z. Okay. Okay. So you've both got the shopping mm. list, and yeah. you, you're going to take turns to you know to attempt to re- retrieve an I- item. Okay. Um, each item you fail to collect will result in you picking up a penalty in the form of a zombie's bite. Right. Once you've been bitten three times, it's game over for you as you're slowly dragged and pulled apart and your intestines becoming spaghetti for the ravenous ghouls. Right. Okay? So the yep. winner will be the person who either survives the game or has the highest number of points um, before their colon becomes an hors d'oeuvre for a hungry walker. Okay. Sound good? Yeah, so far, <laughs> yeah. so good, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, I'll tell you what, Johnny, as you're our guest, I'll let you go first. <laughs> You ready to go shopping? Check it out. Check it out. Step inside a very special supermarket. The only supermarket in the world that gives you brains. I think I've been craving hot dogs for a couple of days, so I'm going to have to go for the jar of gourmet hot dogs. The jar of gourmet hot dogs, okay. So, uh, question one. In the film Zombieland, what food product does Woody Harrelson's character Tallahassee most have a craving for? Is it A, mushroom soup, B, Twinkies, C, Pop-Tarts, or D, fish fingers? That would have to be Twinkies. That's correct. He's, that's a lower point score. It, it is, it's a yeah, yeah, okay. lower point. Okay, so um, uh, Adam, your, your turn. You know what, I'm going to go go big or go home. I'm going for uh, sliced Billy Bear meat, uh, which is found at the, uh, the deli oh counter. Oh my god, okay. What number's that? That's ten, that's so. a big ten. So, um, sliced Billy Bear meat, which is available at the deli counter. So, you've encountered boss zombie boss number one, who is okay. basically Hugh Fernley Whittingstall, the TV chef, um, has been bitten by a zombie and has come back and is now leading a horde of zombies. Okay. In order to defeat him, you have to list within 15 seconds all the ingredients for a pear tartatan. <laughs> That's not zombie related movie <laughs> trivia. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Oh my god! You have 15 seconds starting now. Pear, pastry, sugar, um, pear juice, um, uh, pinch of salt, um, butter, um, uh, uh, flour, uh, <laughs> powdered sugar. Damn it! <laughs> Ooh, I'm afraid you forgot to list the uh, the star anise that uh, oh, flavours it. So, uh, so you, um, I'm afraid you've actually, Adam, you've uh, lost. Uh, you've been bitten once now. So, oh my uh, god! Um, right, I've, that, I've, that's I've, what happens when you try to tackle a zombie boss straight out. I, I got cocky. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. So uh, yeah, one bite to Adam and uh, one point to Johnny. So Johnny, do you want to choose another item? Um, I'm gonna have to go for the chocolate bomb. Think. The chocolate bomb. Okay, let me just. Uh, uh. I love a good chocolate bomb. So, the chocolate bomb. So, in the original Resident Evil game, what did the blue herb do when combined with the green herb? Oh. Uh. Wow. Um. Did it make a health potion? What sort? Well, yeah, but. What reason? Oh, the specific. I'm so glad I didn't get I'll, this, I'll, this I'll, question, I'll, Johnny. I'll, I'll tell you that. I'll give you a moment longer. So remember, the, the green herb tend to heal you, but you know what? What did that blue herb do? I'm gonna say full health. Just a full health potion. Afraid it's not. It's an extra line. No, it was uh, basically it reversed the effects of poisonous bites. So. Ah. Yep. I didn't realise we're going to have gaming questions on here as well. Oh, I'm yeah, starting yeah, to feel yeah, less and less sense. confident so, uh, about this game. Yeah, yeah, okay. So uh, okay. that's one, one bite to Johnny. Uh, uh, all right. So, so over to Adam. Yeah, I'm going to go sort of middle of the road with this one. Um, so I'm going to go for uh, Spanish omelette, which is, you know, I'm, I'm still stuck in the deli counter by the look of this. I've not even got out of the deli counter yet. Um, and um, that uh, gives me five, five points. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So for the Spanish omelette then. Okay. 
You've become cornered by zombies while trying to retrieve the omelette from behind the deli counter which features a range of pre-cooked foods, savoury snacks, meats and cheeses. The only option of escape is to throw food at them uh, in the hope that it'll distract them by giving them something tempting to snack on. You only have time to select one type of snack though. Uh, which of the following do you throw at them? Barbecue chicken wings? A whole chorizo sausage ring? Lamb samosas? Or handfuls of Wensleydale cheese. I go for the uh, samosas, but I throw them like a throwing star, so the point gets uh, stuck into the head and then damages the brain. I'm afraid that's another bite. <laughs> um, <laughs> you, 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 you should have gone barbecue chicken wings or whole chorizo sausage ring because they resemble parts of the human a bit more, than, you know, lure them into a false sense. That's a fair point. That's a good yeah. point. I, I, I don't well, know whether then. I don't know whether the zombies like uh, spicy food, so um, that's that's another bite. I'm afraid. Where the fuck? Damn it! The Damn it! <laughs> I was I was going for the kill. You see, I, I wasn't thinking about distracting them with the food and luring them away. I was thinking like samosa into the brain sort of action. Okay, so I'm not doing very well with this. That's two bites. How many bites do I get? Uh, three. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> She's gonna be shot again. <laughs> <laughs> Have you had any points? Or? No. Oh, right, sure. okay. <laughs> two right. questions, two bites. Okay, so over to you, Johnny. Uh, I'm going to play it safe and I'm going to go for a trifle. Oh, the trifle, eh? Okay. Which aisle is that in? Yeah, that's uh, in the freezer aisle for two points. Okay, so in the film Zombie Fleshy is, a particularly hungry zombie picks a fight with which type of animal? A, a shark, B, a lion, C, a koala, or D, a hamster? Um, hmm. I'm gonna say D. I'm gonna go hamster. Ooh. Ridiculous concept. <laughs> I'm afraid it's wrong, it's a shark. Yeah, a cool. ah. Yeah, yeah, quite quite an impressive scene. Yeah, the zombie uh, picks a fight and wins against a shark. Yeah. But anyway. Hmm. Okay, zombie so, versus shark. So, Johnny, you've got two bites, and Adam, you've got two bites. And uh, so, uh, Adam. What are you going to go for? I'm going to go for... Um, I'm getting out of the deli counter. I'm getting away from there. Um, so I'm running towards uh, tinned goods, and I'm going to go for a bit of a posh corned beef. A bit of posh corned beef, eh? That's uh, two points. So I'm going going a little bit easier now, considering I've only got one life left. <laughs> <laughs> I want to survive a little bit longer. Yeah. Okay, so you encounter one of Dale's previous contestants propped up against the corned beef shelf, bleeding from a wound on her side. It's not clear if it's a zombie bite or a flesh wound caused by something else. Even though you find her attractive, she looks pale and feverish as she reaches out for your help. Uh, you don't know if she is turned or not. What should you do? A. Go to her aid and grab the corned beef after you've checked her wounds. B. End her misery now by filling a nearby trolley with tins of beans and repeatedly ramming it into her. C. Make as much noise as you can in order to attract zombies, hoping they'll drag her off and clear the way for you. Or D. Grab a nearby tin of lentils and approach carefully. Um, I, I, you know what? It's not very uh, chivalrous of me, but um, uh, bitch is dead. I'm gonna like, uh, yeah, just take her out. I'm not risking it. I've only got one bite left. I'm gonna ram her with a trolley and get that corned beef and run. Well, you, you did right because yes, yes. Um, she had turned, and had you approached her, yes, you would have got your yeah. your face ripped she's a, off. She's as good as dead as she's bit. You know, <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, yeah. So that's uh, yeah, that's two points. So you both Go got on. two points, I think, so far. Uh, yeah, that's that okay, Johnny, what what what, what are you going to go for next? Sorry, what are you going to go for next? Mm. Yeah, I can't say that. <laughs> what, <laughs> what are you going to go for next? <laughs> what are you going to go for next? I'm going to go confectionery and I'm going to take the Pringles. Oh. Ooh, the Pringles. Ah, no, the finest of snacks. Mm. Okay, so um, in the film Return of the Living Dead, what is the cause of the zombie outbreak? Is it A, a chemical gas? B, a virus? C, a dodgy kebab. D, paedophiles. <laughs> um, I say virus. Oh. Can I steal the? Can I steal the Pringles? Can I just run and steal the Pringles? <laughs> I'm allowed to do that. I'm afraid not. But um, it, it was uh, it was actually a chemical gas. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Johnny, I'm I'm sorry, but you've been chomped. Um, that's three three in a row. Um, you did. I'm afraid. But um. Yes. I, I, well, no, Adam, you've got to carry on because because oh, well. um, if you get chomped here, it's a draw, and we'll have to go for a decider. Oh, right, okay. So, uh, okay. what are you going to go for? Um, I'm going to go for um, 
Ah, uh, again, I think I'm gonna have to. Should we go for the? Um, should we go for the big ten? Go for the big ten. Uh, so that's the win. Surf and turf gumbo uh, in the freezer, and, um, and that's it. Okay, Adam. So you've encountered zombie boss number two, which is uh, a previous worker of the supermarket who fell into the cheese just as he was turning, and now he stinks. He really smells bad, and he's now leading a horde of zombies in the cheese aisle, the fresh aisle. In order to defeat him, you have 15 seconds in which to name 10 foods that begin with P. Are you ready? Yep. Go. Peas, Pringles, Pizza, Peaches, Pears, Potatoes, Pomegranates, Pastrami. Oh my god, um, Plums. Um. Oh! No! <laughs> Nine. <laughs> Boom! Oh. I'm afraid you just got yourself munched, boy. Pecan nuts. <laughs> yeah. Pasta. Pasta. Munched. Pasta. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm afraid uh, you got munched there. So um, that means it's currently a tie of two points each, which um, brings Johnny back into the game for the decider. Now I just need to work out what would be a good decider and how could we do this. Shit, I haven't thought about this. Uh, <laughs> we got another ten questions. I, 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 tell, you, I, I, I tell you what, you, you'll each get a question and yeah. So, so sudden fire. Figure. Yeah, su sudden death. We're going into sudden death. Sudden zombie death. That, that, okay. That, that's that's um yeah that's quite appropriate, isn't it? Yeah. Um. Okay. So this is for sudden death because you know there's multiple answers and you know, we'll see. Um. This is to recover the broccoli to make your own swamp thing, man. Which again would make sense if you'd listen to the episodes, uh, episode four. <laughs> Just putting that in there. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> go back, listen to it, and then come back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Join us. Anyway, so you're attempting to retrieve the broccoli. However, while reaching for it, you are abruptly tackled by a zombie maintenance man who jumps out from behind a pallet stacked with boxes of bananas. He's quickly on top of you and desperately trying to bite your face off. There are a number of items that are just within your reach. Which of the following should you reach for? A. An unripe banana, which is lying next to you on the floor. B. A badly fitted screw sticking out from some nearby shelving. C. The zombie's utility belt that looks like it might include a screwdriver, however it could could be a peanut tracker bar, you're not sure. Or D. Go for the eyes. Now I want an answer from both of you. See, I'm going to say that I'd go for the loosely fitted screw. Mm hmm Okay. Just for the f just for the fact, my hands need to be near his face, or he's gonna bite me. So you're gonna quickly reach over and grab it? Is that it, or reach with one hand, grab that, stick it in his eye? Okay. Adam? Okay. I'm just gonna go straight for the eyes. Well, I'm afraid, uh, Johnny, you've won. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you could have had the unripe banana, like. Stuck right in. I'm talking like a really unripe banana. They're pretty hard. And um, stuck right through the eye. Um, oh yeah, the screw would have gone there. If you tried to go for the utility belt, that would have been no good because it was a peanut tracker, and your hand would have got caught. Um, go for the eyes. Well, that's not going to do any good, is it? I'm just going to poke him in the yeah, eyes. It's, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So um, Johnny, you've won. That's a bit of that a. It's a bit of a turnaround, isn't it? Oh, this is again. This is a controversial um, <laughs> game. <It's>, uh, <laughs> yeah. Gone from hero to zero very, very quickly. Yeah. So um, and now I'm zombie food. So, so you're the winner of supermarket creeps uh, or creep, even. Well done. What, what does uh, we always? You never leave empty-handed as well, Johnny. We do give uh, our winners um, a present or a mm. prize, um, and we're just going to look around the studio to see if we can find yeah. something. What have we got left? Just trying to think what would uh, what would Monte be Monte Cristo good? cigars? Or is that just an empty box? Oh, that's an empty box. <laughs> um, um, uh, oh, what's this? This looks interesting. Oh, Hold on. Uh, inventions that changed the world. A book. Um, hmm. Would that be a Reader's Digest? It's, it's actually quite a good book. I've read it on the toilet many a time. Yeah, um, can't mm, be a good, good, good toilet reading. Good book. one for the toilet. Yeah. Does that sound good? That sounds awesome, yeah. Brilliant. Well, I'll I'll get that straight in the post right now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's on its way to you, John. <laughs> yeah, I don't need your address. Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah, yeah, congratulations and uh, thanks for for playing and uh, joining. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no, no problem. Cheers, Hope you've mate. enjoyed it. Are you uh, up to anything special now? Uh, I'm probably gonna play 
zombie games, to be fair. Yeah, yeah. Maybe Resident Evil and yeah, uh, yeah. yeah go old school. Yeah. He'd mm-hmm. update my Resident Evil facts. Yeah, exactly, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you, ret- mm-hmm. in fact, don't do that. Don't stay away from games. Go and put Return of the Living Dead on, and watch Good that point. because that is a, you have to see that film if mm-hmm. you've not seen it. Yeah. Um. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So do it. All right. Well. Um. Uh. Happy surviving. <laughs> uh, well, uh, Thank you very much. Yeah. Be careful out there. Yes. <laughs> Cheers. Well, uh, we'll, we'll see you another time. Thanks, mate. Okay. Bye. See you later. Bye. Bye. How do Pablo here? Still in the food to watch films by cupboard. Um, quick status report on Finkel. After that quite alarming, quivering and quaking before, there's been no further movement. I'm not sure what they were trying to do, but it, it definitely didn't work. Um, all that toxic goop's just oozed out down the gurney leg and now on the floor in a big puddle. Um, oh, Johnny's, Johnny's not happy. He's, oh, he's crying. He's crying. Adam's consoling him. Oh, there's no... No stranger sight than a grown man crying wearing no trousers, being consoled by another man wearing no trousers. Although strangely hypnotic. Anyway, Johnny seems to have pulled himself together. Adam's going around the gurney. <laughs> He's falling over again. <laughs> oh, back up now. Oh dear, oh dear. Covered in that goop. Covered in it. Um, right. Adam's helping Johnny on. Oh, it looks like a wolf mask. Oh no, no, it's a, uh, some sort of ceremonial head dress wolf mask thing. And some sort of ceremonial cod piece. Looks like it's fashioned out of food and... Oh. Well, that does not look healthy. You're gonna get a, you're gonna get an infection with that, but it's not my, not my problem. Adam's pouring salt round the table now. Oh, jumped over the puddle. Good job, good job. Once bitten, twice shy. <laughs> right, and Johnny's doing a... Can only describe some sort of tribal dance. One foot to the other. Oh, he's got a, some sort of staff now. He's got a big blade on the end of it. Oh, Adam's, Adam's leaving the room. He's back in with a chicken. Is that like... No, a Muppet chicken. That's a Muppet chicken. Now he's holding it aloft over. Oh God. Johnny's just cut, just cut his head off. It's a kind of felt blood, almost like ribbon falling down onto Finkel. Into his mouth, it's, it's gone, it's absorbed into him. Johnny's saying some words. No, no, still nothing, still nothing. Um, oh. oh, mate. Seriously, we, we, we need to give this up. It's getting out of hand. It, it, one one of these things will work. Look, look I, I, I try to hold my tongue as much as possible during the whole Muppet restaurant fiasco. It's time you listen. Oh. You know, it's, it's for your own good. It's for his own good. Look, it's, he's having no fun. Trying to get raised from the dead and then back again is let let the furry little bastard rest in peace. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I'm I'm not ready to give up yet. Oh, I think right. there's, there's one more thing I'm going to try after this. But That's mental, right? Let's just move on. Okay. Yeah. So our second film and food recommendation then. Yeah. yeah. So, so we've uh, uh, we're now looking at uh, it leads on quite nicely actually from from White Zombie. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, and it is in a sense a zombie movie. Although it doesn't feature any zombies. No. Technically. Um, it's actually Rob Zombie's uh, latest film, mm-hmm. uh, which is a new release, 31. Yes. 3-1. Okay. 3-1. One. One. Uh, 31, I'm actually referring to uh, um, appropriately for this uh, show, um, the 31st of October. Oh, yes. Halloween. Yeah, yeah. All's Halloween. I wonder why it was called 31, but yeah, yeah that well, makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, the, the Rob Zombie, actually, I mean, the, the reason, the concept of the film was um, that he read that um, on, the, on Halloween, more than any other day of the year, mm-hmm. people go missing. Oh, nice. 
Uh, so we felt that was quite a good concept to base the movie around. Yeah. Uh, essentially, this film um, follows uh, a group of uh, travelling carnies mm-hmm. who are uh, travelling through uh, uh, Middle America in the, in the 70s as well. Rob yeah. Zombie loves to set his films in the 70s. Mm-hmm. Um, they are actually, uh, unfortunately, kidnapped. Yes. By a, uh, a group of clowns, mm. um, and then taken to uh, an unknown known location, mm-hmm. um, where they're forced to uh, to uh, uh, fight for survival mm-hmm. against uh, a team of uh, sadistic clowns. Yep. Um, and these are the type of clowns that are here to brighten up your day. Nope. They're here to end your miserable life. Yeah, they're not going to entertain you by firing themselves out of a <laughs> cannon or anything no, quirky or fun. They are going to fuck your shit up. Yeah. Um, in the time. most gruesome way mm-hmm. imaginable. Um, so, yeah, I mean, essentially, it, it then evolves into what is basically a bit like, uh, you know, uh, the, the greatest game or. Um, uh, yeah. Hunger Games or the even Running Man, R- Running Man, which yeah. I there was a lot of parallels yeah, yeah. to the Running Man. Uh, we have uh, Malcolm McDowell, who's uh, mm. credited as Father and Murder, who's a, one of the three mystery folk um, who uh, who are kind of coordinating and betting on the lives yeah. uh, of the, uh, the the unsuspecting carnies. Uh, we've got Sherry Zombie, um, Sherry Moon Zombie, in there, Rob's wife, mm. uh, playing uh, Charlie, one of the protagonists, uh, Jeff. Daniel Phillips in there as well, playing Roscoe, uh, as well as a you know a, a group of actors who have appeared in um, you know various Rob Zombie films uh, throughout yeah. his, his career. Really, you do see it does keep to a really sort of tight knit group um, yeah. of actors and people within it, within his works. Generally speaking, yeah. And um, then you've got like Meg Foster as well, which um, I, I, yeah, she looked haggard. <laughs> she does. She's Big looking. Time. She's looking a bit older these yeah. days. Uh, but probably and, and for me, probably the standout performance of the entire film uh, was from Richard Brake, who uh, yeah, played yeah, Doomhead. Uh, Doomhead. Yeah. Um, one of um, the many uh, uh, sadistic Heads. killer clowns. Um, it, d- did he remind you of the Joker a little bit? Kind of uh, a dark yeah, Heath a little Ledger. Bit. Yeah, 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 a little bit. He had that kind of edge, didn't he? And later on in the film, actually, he sort of looked a bit like the Joker yeah. when he had the blood around his mouth and the yeah. suit and the yeah, the, the, the purple grimace. suit. Yeah, on. Yeah. It was like almost a nod to, but also a link to Batman. Not that I want to make too yeah, many links yeah. to comic books, but uh, Bob the Goon makes a little uh, oh, cameo right. as a uh, lucky. Uh, is it Lucky Joe? Oh, right. Um, that's the guy who was uh, oh, uh, the Joker's yeah, yeah. Uh, right hand man in Tim Burton's Batman. Ah, oh, right, okay. Bob yeah. Lagoon yeah, was yeah. in there. So, uh, so yeah, a little yeah. cameo there for him. Well, yeah, no, there was um, yeah, some pretty um, bizarre, you know, pretty obscure characters. Um, mm. Yeah, the, the the different heads, sick head, schizo head, psycho head, death head, yeah, uh, sex head. <laughs> what did you think? Um, what did you think of the, the 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 array of those characters? I mean, did you? I am. Um, I, I quite like the concept of the characters, but then it was a bit at the same time. I don't know. They kind of I don't know. Uh, the version on the ridiculous, I thought. Well, at, at, at points, which is all to an extent is okay, but I don't know. Well, Death, Death Head, for example, wearing a tutu. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. The, I mean, the, I, th- I think they were they were meant to be kind of really over the top characters, mm. but um, I don't know. There was all this build up to them, and then when actually they came to do anything, they were a bit kind of taken out quite easily really yeah. weren't they you know I it's like, oh, oh, okay i thought the action uh, was a bit of an anticlimax yeah. and i don't i don't know if it's because we're immediately were uh, uh, richard break kind of sets the standard of villain yeah, yeah. at the start and then everything else just seems a little bit anticlimactic thereafter yeah and i also thought like it took a really long time to eventually Rick, richard break's character come back in again yeah. and it was all just a bit like he kind of just took them out a bit too easily didn't he and mm. it was i don't know yeah there wasn't enough kind of yeah it was a survival horror um, but it uh, just, yeah, I, I didn't like it as much as you know, a th- House of a Thousand Corpses or anything no. like that. It, um, I mean, yeah, my, Malcolm McDowell's appearance, um, along with Jane Carr um, and Judy Keeson, as well as the sort of the three sort of um, lardy dars, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, bet, betting on them. Um, yeah, stylistically, visually, I thought it was quite. Good, but then I, I just couldn't. I wasn't really that wowed by it. I was a bit underwhelmed and yeah. a bit. Yeah. I'm a bit the uh, same. I think Malcolm McDowell in particular. You've got an actor like that who's is massively underused yeah. in that film, and I felt like that needed fleshing out. And I think it's kind of it, it's 
it's a, a little bit typical of Rob Zombie films that that visually and stylistically mm. they're always fantastic. I really think it's, it, the guy's yeah, got yeah. A, a great eye for visuals. Um, some of his movies for me are a little bit hit and miss. Yeah. Um, this one, I'd say, doesn't really add anything to his body of work. It's certainly nothing innovative in terms of his body's work, and it's nothing innovative in terms of this no. sort of genre. No. Um, uh, you yeah, know, there's, so, a, there's a lot of be- lot better survival. Yeah, um, yeah. And I think this is an interesting concept. Um, the film was made in, um, I think, about twenty odd days, yeah. and in places it kind of felt a little bit like that. Mm. That it was rushed. It could have been fleshed out in certain areas. Um, yeah. Again, the concept was good, but I felt it could have been developed a bit more. Yeah, yeah. It's it's, it's an entertaining watch, but yeah. I tell you what, though, don't watch this film and then use a hedge trimmer to cut your hedges because <laughs> there's a particular scene <laughs> with a chainsaw that was yeah. just going through my brain and yeah, make, making that trimming of the hedges. Yeah, just in um, case you fell on top of it. And, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there there are some really sort of gruesome. I mean, it feels like it could have been a movie that Pablo could have reviewed for us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, exactly. Because there's, yeah. A, there's a lot of gore in there. But again, some of the action felt a bit flat to me in places. Mm. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think if you're a fan of Rob Zombie, You'll enjoy it, but you, I'd, I'd be surprised if it's amongst your favourite of his films. Yeah. Uh, if you're a fan of horror in general, you'll enjoy it, but it probably wouldn't be in your you know, top films of, of even the year, um, never mind of all time. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. So, um, yeah, c- could, could have been something good, but a bit of a letdown, I'd say. Yeah. 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 No worries. Well, yeah, shall we get on to the, the food recommendations then for anyone who wishes to enter the... Uh, um, the, the the hellish arena absolutely so um, it's my, my turn <laughs> yeah 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 to, uh, go, to, to go serve up the goods mm-hmm. um so i'm going to go back in time oh, nice. for this one Whoa. um i'm going to travel back uh, to 1970s america i'm going to be cruising on uh, route 66 and mm. i'm just going to you know just kind of pull into a diner and have myself a good old fashioned uh, american uh, cheeseburger fries and, and a coke oh, yes. um uh, that's that's just normal cheeseburger nothing fancy Mm-hmm. On it, you're not going to give me like chorizo or jalapenos. This is 97. I just want like you know standard That's side of the road burger, food. Burger and, shake. and and that's you know the reason I want that is because I feel that kind of represents how I felt about the movie. It was just kind of bog standard, um, nothing special. Yeah, average fare. Average av- average fare. It's what I expected, mm. and nothing more. Um, you know, it's quite cool. You know, in the seventies, you know, kind of the the atmosphere and the visuals quite cool. But you know, it's pretty standard of of what you'd expect. Nothing mm. out of the ordinary. Um, yeah. Nothing surprise and nothing particularly nutritious. Um, so yeah, yeah, I'm just gonna have a cheeseburger. Fair dues. Get your son a cheeseburger. Yeah. In the nineteen seventies, though, you gotta go back into. Gotta yeah, find oh yeah, time yeah, machine yeah, yeah. First. But that's very important. That's a real important ingredient. Get, Get a yourself time a flux capacitor and go yeah. to eighty-eight miles an hour. Yeah. Um. You know, and one point twenty-one gigawatts yeah, required. Yeah. Um, um, and pick yourself up a cheeseburger. Yeah, yeah, and uh, then make sure you you know you don't have sex with your own mum. Yeah, like we're, we're not condoning that. No, no, no. Yeah. No, no, I mean, that's, yeah, that's this film's pretty weird, but yeah. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, that's a good one. And um, yeah, for for me, um, I was trying to think of how you could really create that sense of being in that hellish situation of being, you know, twelve hours to survive. All these like freaks coming at you, trying to cut you up and stuff. Um, and I was trying to think how you could recreate that sense of dread and that. Oh. Um, so I thought what you do is basically book yourself onto a long haul flight. You know, lasting about 12 hours long and mm-hmm. um, but just before you do that eat something really dodgy that's very likely going to give you severe food poisoning and enjoy that flight because it's not going to be good <laughs> <laughs> and uh, particularly if it's a busy one where the toilets are always being used and you're yeah. you know you somebody's trying to join the mile high club where you just you just need to use it for its, its yeah, purpose yeah you're in a lot of pain you, yeah. uh, oh. you're, f- you're suffering there's no way out of this aeroplane the altitude out of this hell. hell yeah exactly yeah. Um, you know, I, I don't know exactly what you would eat to in, inflict yourself with such bad foods, poisoning, you know, old meat or something. To... Undercooked kosh. <laughs> yeah, have an undercooked kosh. Yeah. <laughs> you could, you're returning back from your holiday in, ha- holiday in Haiti. Is it conch? I think it's conch, sorry. Yeah, I yeah, say yeah. Conch. Under, undercooked conch. 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 Yeah. But I think they pronounce it conch, 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 or something like that. Anyway. <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. So you're returning from your, <laughs> your, your holiday, holiday in Haiti, Haiti. Yeah. Uh, where you know you've, you've been zombified through indulgence, yeah. and yeah, you've just feasted on um, a dodgy conch, undercooked flesh. <laughs> yeah, and now you're on a shitty flight. Anyway, so yeah, there we have it. So if you feel like exploring thirty one, um, you can have yourself. Um, you know, uh, nine, you travel back to the 1970s and have a an average fair roadside burger, or yeah, poison yourself and go on a 12 hour flight, see what happens. Yeah, yeah. probably not, you know, fun, but hey, hey ho, what you gonna do? <laughs> yeah, all right, well, uh, yeah, let's move on. <laughs> cupboard at the Food Watch Films by Household. Um, oh, looks like they're taking a break from recording now. They're not uh, not bothering with Finkel, just getting a book from the shelf. It's nice to see a bit of literacy um, in uh, modern people. Uh, I think it's a lost art, just picking up a book, having a, having a nice read. I do recognise that book. I think possibly from one of my first reviews. Is that? That's the Necronomicon Ex Mortis from the Evil Dead franchise. But that can't. Johnny's reading aloud now. I'm, I'm still very concerned by this. Um, no, headphones back on. Right, well, hopefully I'll get out of here at some point and uh, be able to jack this in. But, uh, right, okay. Speak to you soon. Oh, fuck it, you know what? I'll just forget about it. I'll get that window fixed, but, um, yeah. I think maybe maybe you're right. Maybe I just need to let him go. It, yeah, it, it took to this stage for you to actually listen to me. I know, I know, but um, well, let's, let's just move on anyway. Well, if anyone wants to buy a, a ceremonial cod piece, then uh, you know. can you put them with us on eBay? Don't know, not sure. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, all right. Well, anyway, uh, yeah, we're at this point in the podcast again. Where we we're going to uh, welcome Pablo in for another film, not to eat food by, uh, mm-hmm. where he's going to talk about a film of of the gory ilk um, mm. that's going to. Settle your stomach off some. So, uh, Pablo, are you there? Um, how do you guys? How are you doing? Not. Too, hang on, yeah. Where are sound, you? you? Sound a bit quiet and echoey. I. Yeah, I'm. I'm just. Uh, oh no! I just had to. to um, yeah, just, just had to find somebody to 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 call from. It's a, it's a, just a, a little the, bit. Um, not not to worry. Not to worry where I am. We'll, just, we'll just press on. I'm just he's got a goats and trees calendar behind him. I've got one of them. <laughs> yeah, we were just talking about them earlier. Yeah, um, okay. yeah. yeah that's that's funny. Funny. Got, it looks like the that's... same one as well. Yeah. Got... Oh well. Oh well. Yeah. No, no, definitely, definitely nothing. Uh, 
nothing nothing to do with that um no no i was just talking earlier about it it's part of my um grieving process i've found uh, uh the comedy of the goats and trees calendar has been making me feel a bit better about you know losing uh, finkel you, and the other 30 muppets you see so people find it therapeutic which is you know look yeah. at pablo he's got one he's yeah yeah, yeah popular yeah, popular uh, well i'll i'll, I'll pr- I'll press on. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Do you do you want to bring your offering to the table, Pablo? Um, if you're gonna spew, spew into this. Yes. Um. Well, today, um, I'll be reviewing the 2014 French film Goal of the Dead. Oof. Um, keep May it on we. topic. Um, yeah, it's um, essentially a, a, um, a film where uh, the two prime components uh, are zombie and football. Oh, so right. it's a, a football genre film and a zombie film. Okay. So creating that that subest of smallest of sub 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 genres that is zombie football movies, which uh, right. I think maybe maybe the one and only example of that foreign zombie football movies as well. So. Yes, so it uh, covers all the, mm. all with the subtitles, with the subtitles to boot. It's it's definitely it's uh, not, not quite sure if it's if it's a date movie or not. Uh, that's yeah. uh, that's a thing. Um, but yes, um, now I will say I will, didn't have the highest of hopes with this film um, with those caveats in place. Sight the zombie, always like the zombie. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm not much of a sportsman myself, so uh, I, I had some a degree of trepidation going into this. Uh, but I must say, very much. Very much enjoyed the film. Um, mm-hmm. To give it a brief, uh, brief plot, um, yeah, yeah. basically a, a, a football player near the end of his career um, plays for some Paris type team, um, and uh, he's in, he's in the big leagues, but he's not been the the best of players. He's been just a bit of a um, everyman, um, and uh, near the end of his career, they're playing a, a big match in his old hometown. Uh, where many years ago he um, once played for the local team and got uh, got into the public spotlight by um, playing quite a good t- uh, game and being promoted out into the, the bigger teams and essentially he's left this uh, place in the dirt for the last 17 years and he's finally back home mm-hmm. and uh, they're, not, they're not best pleased with him. Oh, right. um, well, as this is all going on, as, uh, as part of this, a doctor um, has uh, got, got hold of I think what he thinks is essentially just a steroid, um, but there's a oh. bit of postman confusion. Um, oh, and it gets and mixed up with a get mixed up with. Uh, I'm not sure that, that it doesn't really explain specifically what it's mixed up with, but there does seem to be a power station of some sort looming yeah. in the background. Um, so yes, and he injects uh, his uh, son, who's a footballer for the team that they'll be playing against, mm-hmm. um, with uh, some sort of. Uh, nefarious chemical which uh, turns him into a um a football playing zombie that vomits on people um okay. and that vomit vomit in turn turns other people into zombies oh, right i've never seen that before Zom- mm. zombies becoming zombies from vomit I don't think yes and it's it's quite um you know it's a very white uh kind of like a white paint type of thing but it's a oh, it's right. a very nice visual not since um, Stand By Me has there been a more prolonged vomit, <laughs> yeah, yeah. group vomit scene in a film. Um, yeah. And it, it goes on. Um, you so, get used to it. But uh, So if the six bright white as well, does that affect the sort of the lines on the pitch and stuff? Does that cause some confusion in the games? Or is it actually the people becoming zombies that well, causes the confusion? Or? Ultimately, there's, there's, there's a little bit of football at the very start, but there's not a huge amount of actual football played in, in the film. Yeah. It's... Um, it's an interesting actually it's a very arty film it's a, it's a film of two two halves oh, so to speak yeah. Lit- literally and figuratively um because the film um is literally cut in the sec- uh, first and second half so you've mm-hmm. got the first half um and then in the interim you get a little advert which is a very clever thing they use a advert uh for a different film okay but the ad the advert actually relates to a kind of a flashback showing you something that happened 17 years ago to the main character. Whoa. Um, and then that, and then that finishes and then uh, the second half begins much like a football match. Yeah. Um, 
and uh, the film continues. And from there, it's basically it's led up quite well to the first uh, end of the first half, uh, and then it starts getting a little bit violent. And then come the second half, that's when Blood you know bath. there's car door head decapitations, there's death by um, bar stool, um, you know, and lots and lots and lots of uh, vomit. Yeah. So on, on a gore rating, what would you give? Uh, well, for this one, I'd, I'd say, you know, I'd, I'd say three and a half, a mm-hmm. good three and a half. Um, let's say uh, three and a half vomiting football hooligans out of five. Mm-hmm. Um, nice but yeah, picture. it was pleasant. Yeah, pleasantly surprised. It was, uh, you know, I'd, I would recommend it. Um, you know, it's definitely not uh, not one I was uh, upset by watching. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's uh, very good. There's a, a little bit, as as the French seem to always like to do, incorporate a little bit of. Um, um, martial arts into the film, oh, yeah. but it's um, done by uh, uh, Zombroni. I don't know if that was the purpose. I don't know. If there's a translation <laughs> crossover there, but um, and he was the uh, uh, possibly the most devoted football agent I've ever seen. He's okay. you know dispatches two zombies to save his client, but then uh, when he finds out his client's future may not be too favourable, um, he, he certainly changes his tune. So uh, very de- devoted to a point. Devoted mm. to a point. Mm. But yeah, it's uh, a nice, uh, a nice film which I very much enjoys. Oh, well, cheers for that, Pablo! Uh, another contribution to, uh, I suppose, a different take on zombie films. We were talking a bit about that yeah. earlier about how zombies are kind of evolving in a way and are being used in different contexts. Yeah, love a lo- films, a lot of different subgenres as well. So mm. yeah, that's probably a, a perfect example of that. Yeah, yeah, but um, yeah, it could be a cautionary tale of those. Uh, you know, again, getting into sports, maybe they shouldn't. A bit like you're running. Um, from yeah, the there's, there's a lot of hidden dangers in doing physical exercise, uh, such is. as zombies and uh, decapitations. And decapitations yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Lesson to be learnt there, kids. Yeah. But uh, yeah. So, what? Uh, how, how you spend the rest of your evening, Pablo? Um. Well, for now, I'm just. I think I'll just settle down here till it gets a bit quiet. Mm. Um, it's quite cosy. Yeah, my, you know, I think I just slink off. Although <laughs> you, you, you're not, you're not stalking any uh, victims of yours, are you? <laughs> you're not like currently on one <laughs> of your, uh, you know, night shifts that yeah. you talked about well, before. Why would you make you say that? Can you have you seen or heard something? No, no, you just, yes. just, you always like to kind of hang in the shadows, watching before you yes. before you strike. Yes, <laughs> yeah. well, what do you usually tell us about? Yeah, you know, yeah. uh, <laughs> who, who's the unlucky victim this time? <laughs> Oh, um, I, I I won't say, but uh, mm-hmm. yeah, no, I'm, I'm not nothing like that today. I'm just uh, taking it. doing a little bit of my own uh, personal personal project work today. Oh, yeah, cool. Okay. Oh, f- fair enough. Okay. Fair enough. Well, uh, yeah. Well, 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 do we'll... not envy your next victims, Pablo. Yeah. Well, we'll find out next next episode yeah, then yeah. as to well, uh, let, what happened. Let's, let's let's just say there's there's a couple of people who may have made a list, and from what I've seen today. I've got a bit of a reprieve. I think I'll cross them off. We'll come back to this at another time. But uh, okay. for now, yeah, uh, mission aborted. Let's put it that way. All right, yeah, lucky fellows, lucky fellows. Fair play. Very lucky. You've no idea. Literally no idea. <laughs> no idea. Yeah. Well. Uh, All right. Well, yeah. We'll we'll find out next time. Then uh, what 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 happens there if, if anything? And uh, yeah, good good to see you again, Pablo. Oh yes, I would say just as a film, um, oh yeah, to re- re- uh, uh, extra recommendation to touch on both points. Probably, um, this is the French film from two thousand four, uh, District Thirteen. Oh, um, yeah. not to be confused with District Nine. Yeah, the yeah. Uh, the prawns. Yeah, the prawns. Uh, <laughs> the prawns. Not to be confused with that. This is District Thirteen. It's it's basically a film where the main uh, point of the film is to show off a lot of parkour. Mm. So it's um, <laughs> yeah. it's 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 a state where the, the a section area a section of Paris has been cordoned off by a massive wall going all the way around where all the criminals and all the bad elements and all the poor people basically live. Yeah. Um, and um, it's just basically the story of uh, these two guys, one guy a police officer, another guy um, just a kind of a, a street thug from that area with a good heart. Mm. Um, and. It, situations present themselves where there's a kind of a race against time element to getting something sorted which involves a lot of fighting a lot of kicking a lot of uh, people getting their 
getting severely injured um, and uh, just a lot of uh, jumping about like spider monkeys. So uh, mm-hmm. definitely worth it. On the zombie front of things, obviously, you know, uh, I, I can't really say uh, about subtitled zombie films without referencing um, the Spanish films Rec, yeah, Rec yeah, 1 and Rec. Fantastic movie. Yeah. yeah, Rec, Rec and Rec 2. I, I would suggest if anybody's got the time to, uh, or the inclination, watch Rec followed mm-hmm. by Rec 2 in a single sitting, watch it as one whole film. Um, because obviously the sequels thereafter, which are vary in quality, but uh, Rec yeah. 1 and 2 watch together, it's, it's one whole story. It yeah. doesn't really stop. So yeah. you can uh, yeah, no, really appreciate them out. Way. Yeah, I've not seen Rec 2 yet, but I've heard people say. That, yeah. that it goes fantastically well so in, in terms of a sequel so yeah, yeah that'll yeah. be certainly a my to watch list anyway have yourself a little banquet yeah Spanish zombies mm. Mm. El Zombri <laughs> I believe is how it's pronounced yes <laughs> <laughs> great alright then Pablo we'll, uh, we better uh, bid you adieu anyway as it's getting late and almost bedtime I think actually I'm yeah I'm getting a bit okay. sleepy yeah well, they, it, you know, it's just I'll, I'll go. Use use wind it up. Take it take it easy. You know, mm-hmm. just uh, maybe maybe take uh, some sort of uh, sleeping draft of some sort. Some sort of uh, you know, because I I want you to have a sound solid sleep. Oh, thanks. You know, just, well, yeah, work tomorrow and all that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, you just you just get on with that, and I'll um I'll just keep mm-hmm. up here for a bit longer until I can uh, shoot off myself. Oh, it's a bit Sorry. tiring. All right, well, uh, you get yourself a good night's sleep then, Pablo. Night night. Hey, you two boys. Night night. Good night. Don't let the bed bugs bye. bite. Bye. Toodles. Bye. <laughs> right, um, I don't know, I, I'm feeling a little bit better now, actually, Adam. I think um, yeah. it's, it's kind of proved to be quite therapeutic, you know. I think yeah. I've let go now. And... Well, you've had t- time to come to terms with it, you know. You've, 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 you've tried your best. Mm-hmm. Um, there's nothing you can do. Something sometimes things are just out of your control. Yeah, it's I mean, life, man. It's life and death. You just you've just got to. It's, death is part yeah. of life. I mean, he, he, accept it. You know, he's out there now, though. Um, yeah. God knows what he's doing. Um, yeah, you know, um, Muppet. <laughs> uh, unpredictable. Exactly. Exactly. Hopefully, um, you know, things will work its way on. I'm saying it. Hopefully, things will uh, work out for the best. Yeah. Anyway, and so. Yeah, Finkel, if you're out there, you know, Daddy loves you. <laughs> anyway, um, so uh, that almost brings us to a close of this uh, zombie-themed episode 10 yeah. of Food to Watch Films by. And, um, yeah, before we go, um, yeah, we recently had a bit of a poll on Twitter and um, I posed the question I asked to our listener earlier about if you were a zombie, which part of the human anatomy would you attempt to eat first? And uh, gave the options there of uh, neck or face, leg or breast, intestines or colon, or, you know, simply to have a finger buffet. And it was a bit of an even split, really, between mm. the leg or breast and have a finger buffet, which I was quite um, surprised by. Yeah, I mean, uh, no mm. one really going for the intestines or colon. Yeah, or, I think... uh, neck and neck and neck or face. Um yeah, yeah like leg or breast and finger buffet. I mean, maybe it's because those two options sounded more like general more food options. Yeah, yeah, yeah finger maybe. buffet. You kind of think, uh, but well, yeah, yeah. Maybe I if you're actually in the in the grip of a zombification, you'd actually probably just go like old Tarman straight to the uh, yeah. straight for the brain. Well, I, I think I'd probably go for brain. the face. I don't know why. There's something about it. You know. yeah. I'm just going for it. <laughs> but, you know, sink those choppers into that that yeah. mush. Oh yeah. So, so yeah. well yeah, that's uh, that's it folks. So um that's all folks. Yeah, I think we're we're going to get ourselves to bed. Uh, yeah. Hopefully have a, you know, pleasant pleasant ned sleep. Mm. And uh, we'll uh, we'll see you for for next episode. Oh, and uh, look out for we'll be releasing as well a special um a special edition episode coming out as well before episode 11 featuring yeah. a a guy by the name Glenn Maynard. Yeah, uh, following on from a Pablo's review of uh, Chocolate Strawberry Vanilla, um, yeah. which is a film that we we all enjoyed so much that uh, we asked Glenn to uh, yeah. to uh, to come on and have a chat with us. Yeah, so, yeah, so, uh, yeah. so listen out for that at all. I guarantee it'd be worth a listen. So uh, and yeah. if you've not seen the film yet, I stro- yeah. wholeheartedly it. encourage you to do so because it is a fantastic um, independent film. Yeah. Go for it. Okay. All right. Okay. So, 
Pleasant dreams, everybody. Na na. Bye. Oh, well, still in this cupboard. What time is it? Oh, God, it's been hours. Oh, it sounds quiet out there. Let's have a look. Oh, it's all right, it's just me. Oh, there they are. Sleeping like lambs. Hush, little Johnny, don't say a word. Pablo's gonna buy you a mockingbird. And if that mockingbird won't sing, Pablo's going to buy you a diamond ring. And if that diamond ring turns brass Pablo's going to buy you a looking glass and if that looking glass gets broke Pablo's going to buy you an Adam a goat in a tree calendar Night night boys I'll see you soon see you in your dreams <laughs> <laughs>